This is going to be your guide to choosing a class in New World. First thing you need to know, weapon archetype does not matter at all. When you get levels, you can spend those levels to get attribute points, and respecking is free when you first start the game, so there is nothing gating you from building however you want. When you make it into the first town, that's when you buy the weapons that you want, and when you hit level 20, you can get really good faction gear for cheap. So you do a couple of quests, and then yeah, you buy the great axe or the sword or whatever weapon you want. You get the basic gear for the light, medium, or heavy equip load that you plan on running, and that's all you need to worry about when it comes to that. So there's absolutely no reason to pick an archetype based on the weapons you want to play. You're doing it for the trade skills. So what? Suck it up. Run the fire staff or the spear for a little bit. It only takes a couple minutes to get in town, and then you can build however you want. And that brings us to the trade skills. What do you want to do in this game? Do you want to make money? We're going to talk about that. Do you want to make weapons and armor? Do you want to do mining, wood cutting? There's all kinds of different things you can do in this game, and that is what you want to be picking for. Now in the beta, the trade skill boost was absolutely busted because it started you at level 50, and you can just kind of click on the skill and see what you get immediate access to. So silver, oil, gold, alchemy stones, if you choose mining, that's pretty good. For tracking and skinning, it's going to scale with levels. You get to skin higher level prey, I don't know the exact scaling on that. Harvesting is interesting because you get magical plants. And harvesting is a really annoying skill, pretty much the best way of training it is going to be herbs and hemp. And then there's kind of benefit for the higher level stuff, you need to make to like level 100, level 150, level 205 before it actually becomes like decent and profitable. And then starting off at mature trees for logging, also going to be pretty nice because you just hit young trees forever and it's one of the slower skills to level so it's not really that fun and those are some of the considerations so let's take a look at soldier where we have weaponsmithing mining and smelting level 50 jumps us to gold and steel which is pretty good and smelting you have to spend a lot of resources to get levels in smelting. So let's break this down in a tier list. Those are still cool, right? I think it's a solid B tier. And when it comes to crafting skills, crafting has been really devalued because a lot of the gear you can get, you don't have to craft. You can craft to make sure you like guarantee this in the end game. If you're playing with some friends or a large enough group, then yeah, it might be good to dedicate one person to each thing, and as each person is leveling up their skills, they kind of trade resources with each other, and maybe you get a high enough weaponsmith where they can actually make and sell decent gear for good amounts of profit. But a big change with New World Eternum is that they want the story mode to be completely soloable, so it's actually really easy, and you mostly just want to rush to level 60, level 65, because that's when all of the content unlocks. Now the weird thing about gathering tools is that they work off of your player level and not the skill level. So if you max out to level 60 or 65, you have a thousand percent gathering speed. There's no reason to train these skills until you get a very high level and very good tools. But it's also pretty good to have a couple levels in a skill as you're just kind of passively gathering resources along the way while doing the main story quest and getting levels. Like if you see an iron node, you need to mine it because the competition is going to be insane. And then as we talked about, like, yeah, smelting is cool, but there's also other weird things that have happened to the game. Sorry that I keep going back and forth between the tier list and the archetypes in the game, but I kind of need to build up everything and then we can just kind of bang it out for the rest of the video because there's research notes and research notes are going to give you experience depending on if you get these resources. So you can find them while doing the skill and you can also buy them from the faction traders. So gathering skills have alternate ways of getting experience and we can pop some of those crates right here. So here's where we get the pollen and then you can also get the unusual ore and you get multiple of them and then that turns into experience. So depending on the experience rates, you can kind of see how this ends up converting. Or it's like, cool, we use one of these and that's 3,700 experience just like that, which is actually significant for harvesting even in 200 levels. And then we can do two of this for uh, 19,000 and that's going to give us a level and a little bit more. And then when it comes to crafting, a lot of the rare resources are able to be extracted. You can extract Asmodium. Now you do need like high level stuff in Azoth, but it kind of shows like, oh, there's more ways of getting this than initially on release. And who knows what's going to do to the economy and how that stuff is going to interact. 
but it also works with a lot of other resources that if you have infused armor scraps, that's going to be orichalcum. You can get leather layer from weapon scraps and then star metal and other resources, word wood, iron wood. So it's not like, oh, if you're a dedicated woodworker, you have one of the only ways of putting these resources into the game, therefore they have more value. Now it's been really spread out across a lot of different things that you can just kind of go out into a high level area, get gear, deconstruct the gear and then end up with a couple of scraps and then you can use those scraps for all kinds of things. So those systems have changed. Also, some of the other skills have really weird things now because you can get cooking experience by breaking down recipes. So instead of having a ton of bulk worthless recipes, you can just take the recipe and get a couple thousand experience for it. You can even do this for furnishing you can also use the legendary resources for weaponsmithing, you can use the patterns for armoring. So yeah, there's a lot of weird ways you can get experience now. So what I'm saying is, a lot of the skills have been devalued, and I think it's a good place to just kind of put this right here at B tier. Yeah, mining, that's still going to be good. A head start in any gathering skill, that's going to be good. Smelting, it's useful. And then all of like the crafting doesn't really matter, except for jewelry crafting. But we'll get there after we talk about the next archetype, the destroyer. Destroyer seems pretty terrible that it's armoring, skinning, and then leatherworking. Leatherworking extractions kind of seem whatever. Skinning, that's just something you can naturally train up as you're killing wildlife, and you just get a lot of skinning experience in a short amount of time anyways. So it's one of the faster skills, which means getting a boost to it doesn't really matter, especially if you get like a high level skinning knife when you hit level 60, and then you one shot low level stuff and you just get super duper mega harvesting experience. Next, we have the Ranger. So Ranger is going to give you engineering, woodcutting, and woodworking. Woodcutting's good, because like I said, it's kind of slow and boring. Engineering, kind of weird, but not super useful, because again, like a lot of your weapon drops are going to be coming from expeditions, especially in the later game. And because the story is meant to be soloed, the game just spoons you gear all the way up, and then through expeditions or higher level areas or all the other in-game content, you end up with good enough gear and you can work towards this. So unless, like, again, you're in a large group or you're, like, really dedicated, like, I only want to make the best armor. And even then, like, armoring is going to have more value than any of the weapon crafting because weapons seem more accessible. And because of the artifacts, well, one of your two slots for weapons is going to be an artifact and kind of gear that up yourself. And then it's going to be different for all of the other armor classes. So you need to have over 200 for refining and crafting skills, but that takes a lot of money and a lot of investment and the profit margins can be slim and you're kind of just like rolling for bis. But then like that means you can't really use it for yourself because you need to sell it for 100k or something. And then maybe you get some of your money back. The reason why you want these skills is because you're the core part of your guild and you're going to be pumping out gear to the rest of your, your guild as they're giving you all the resources as kind of the investment and maybe some profit comes along the way. But if you're an MMO player that goes, no, this is what I do, I'm going to make the system work for me, well then choose what you like to make and that's kind of where it goes. Next up we have Musketeer, which I'm going to slip into A tier. I think Harvesting is going to be the sleeper pick. Even though it's not like the craziest gathering skill on the surface, I think just starting on magical plants and being able to harvest every magical plant you see when no one else is picking harvesting is going to give you a huge advantage in resources and being able to sell stuff. And it doesn't like take away. It's not like, oh, I need to train harvesting or I'm going out of my way for this. No, there's magical plants everywhere. There's not going to be a lot of people harvesting them. And then you can just get all this stuff for free. And then you also have like a little bit less time to go into silkweed. So you can use that like, oh, I see silkweed. No one else has level 100 because gathering sucks. Now I have a monopoly, kind of, or at least you have an advantage when it comes to this. It also gets more detailed, so I might have to make, like, specific guides for all of the skills because you also get luck, and then that luck is going to apply to gear. It's also going to apply to your tools, and with levels, you also gain base luck, and that's going to increase the resources that you get. So you actually get a deeper pool of items when you have higher amounts of luck because there's, like, a luck threshold. Next, we have the Occultist, which I'm going to say is the exception to the rule when it comes to crafting skills, because it's a lot harder to get really good jewelry compared to, like, getting really good weapons and armor. And jewelry crafting is expensive. Even, like, the first 50 levels or so are going to be a lot because, oh, you have to spend money on gems, and there's going to be a lot of contesting for the gems because a lot of people just want good, decent, playable rings early on. And you can immediately turn this into profit. 
but you need gems you also need ingots ingots are going to be kind of expensive but then again that level 50 mining that's going to be a good advantage smelting that's going to just give you access to gold give you access to other materials and then you can mine what you need as well then we have mystic and i think mystic is another like sleeper s tier because we have gathering which is already really good and i think arcane is going to be very beneficial in the early game as well kind of expensive and tedious to level but then you just get a head start on making potions and some other stuff that players are going to want and while i think arcana does kind of fall off into the late game again because like weapons are going to be really easy through expeditions and other drops some of these early crafts are absolutely busted like look at this you just pump the market of all the new players with gaia's whim I keep saying that the only thing that matters is rushing to level 60, 65, that way you can get access to almost all of the game's content, but if you choose Mystic, you might just be one of the mad lads crafting where you scoop up all of these resources, ch turn out for some kind of profit, and then there's going to be a limitless amount on like a medium or high population server of people wanting this. At the very least, if you're playing with a group, you need to bully someone into this archetype and then make them make this. And then also you can use the higher arcana levels to get benefits as, as well. And maybe you just corner a market. You make stronger potions, you supply coatings, and then you lock down like the entire mid game gear. Yeah, I think arcana actually goes crazy. And maybe someone in the comments is going to be like, but here's the thing. You choose level 50 engineering and they got some crazy stuff there too. I'm not going to go through the entire list of weapons and then like how some of these other things work and are affordable and the gear score and stuff, but Arcana just seems free. And Mystic changes the entire way that you play your game, but it seems pretty crazy. And that brings us to the final one, Swordbearer, which has a lot of weird stuff. Here we have a buff to fishing, and I actually didn't like hover or know the buff, so I don't even think it drops you off at level 50 fishing. It might be a trophy, or it might be like some kind of passive benefit. Fishing is ite, and it can also be like really profitable, and pearls get really expensive. I have not touched fishing. I know there's psychopaths that really only th play this game to fish, or it's like their main AFK activity. I don't know the benefits or the profitableness of that. It's such a slow skill. Leatherworking is whatever, but level 50 cooking might just be enough for like B tier. And then fishing, I'm just going to say whatever the buffs to fishing probably jumps it to A tier. Also, in my opinion, it's probably the best weapon start if you're doing like PvE and solo content or you're just like grinding through the story. Great Sword Blunderbuss sounds like a blast. So I guess like you don't have to do the small little step of changing out your gear and whatever, which is a very tiny benefit, like 0.2 of a tier. So let's just say A. But with cooking, you get a couple of good recipes, and then you start making some killer profit. You save money with the jump start, and then you just kind of have a good footing to start off with higher level food to sell to people. And yeah, that, I think that's pretty good catapult. Actually, after thinking about it, I might have slept on armoring. Actually, I might have really slept on destroyer because of bags and the natural gameplay loop here. You skin for leather, you leather work, and then you make bags. Bags are always going to be in crazy demand, especially on a fresh start server, and even like lower level bags people are going to want to buy and hold on to for a long time. There's a chance I'm sleeping on engineering because of tools, but I think like level 50 engineering isn't as crazy of a jump. Also, maybe a lot of Timmies are going to go, oh, Destroyer is cool, I want to go Hammer Axe, because it is one of the more accessible ones. I don't know if that goes, like, which way that goes, because then that means more people are capable of quickly making bags, but also it means just a lot of Timmies aren't going to min-max, like I'm saying in this video. So there's going to be noobs looking for little tool upgrades that are also going to be doing some kind of gathering. There's also going to be a lot of people spending money on bags and small upgrades. So it could get interesting, like the lower level player base and then the super sweats that just kind of accelerate beyond everyone are going to be two different kind of games. So there we go, guys. That's my thoughts on choosing a starting class in New World. Uh, go with these four unless you want to do like some weapon smithing and you think there's an angle there. And then you don't have to go for S tier. What also sounds like appealing to you and what you want to do in this game works just fine. But I think uh, it kind of shows you guys some crazy stuff that you can accomplish. And it all comes down to that starting class choice if you don't care about the weapons because all of that is fake. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.